This CAMP Photoshop tutorial is demonstrated in Adobe Photoshop CS3. Most or all of the techniques can be accomplished in previous versions of Photoshop. Welcome to CAMP Photoshop, the destination for new adventures and creativity. Learn more at CampPhotoshop.com. Now, Adobe Certified Expert and Head CAMP Counselor, Roger Ridpath. Hey, here we are at 004. This picks up right where 003 left off. So I'm going to jump right in where we left off on 003. I still have the red color selected as my foreground color, and I want to add some paint drips. So I'm going to, I still have my brush tool selected. I'm going to go up to the brush, so, uh, brush palette here, and I'm going to select hard round 19 pixel. I'm still on my layer with the painting and paint is going to drip downward. So I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to paint straight down. Now this doesn't have to be in a particular spot. Uh, anywhere that you want to put a drip, your drips should probably be some shorter and some longer. And then you'll want to go over to your foreground color and we want to switch this to black, which you can click on the default foreground and background colors, which is also the D key on your keyboard. Now our opacity is still set at 90. That's where we left it before, and I think that's fine. So let's put some drips on our eyes. Some nice drips here. So once we have some drips where we want them, what we want to do is displace this particular layer with the painting on it. Now we've already done this before. If this is too fast, please refer to tutorial 001 or 002. Let's turn these two layers off. I'm going to turn off the painting layer and the lighting effect layer. And I'm going back to that original main layer of the bricks that I started with and uh, I have that because I duplicated those layers. I made some new layers in between. I'm going to go to that layer. I want to go to channels. I'm going to pick the red channel. Right click on the red channel and I'm going to say duplicate channel and I want to make under document I want to make a new. I'm going to call this my brick wall channel and I'm going to say OK to that. And then the quick way to save this is just to hit your close window button and you do want to save it. Remember where you're going to save it because you are going to need this image again in just a moment. And remember what you name this image. For our purposes, I'll save this as brick wall displace. And I'll remember where I save that, which I'm saving it with my other files for this project. And that file is gone. It's closed. Now, this is important. Again, I mentioned this before. You want to make sure when you're over here working the channels that you want to jump back up to all the channels. You want to make sure that you're viewing all the channels. Then let's go back to our layers. And I'm going to turn our layers back on. There's our drawing. And there is our lighting effect. And now you want to pick your drawing layer. And we're going to go to Filter, Distort, Displace. I'm going to change it to 20 for this particular image and leave the other settings in their default. When I click the OK button, I'm going to be asked to select a displacement map. I want to pick the displacement map that I just saved brickwalldisplace.psd. I'm going to click open on that. And Photoshop did its work, did some little displacement for us. And if we zoom in just a little bit here, we can see some of the nice texturing effect around the edges of our painting, making this look a lot more realistic. Look what's happened with our drips here. They're now moving with the shape of the bricks uh, instead of being straight. We made them straight on purpose. But in reality, these, these would drip around the shapes of the brick uh, and create a much more realistic effect as it's dripping down the wall. Let's just do a few final touches. Now, uh, again, mention this in tutorial 001 and 002. It looks like multiply uh, is a really good effect here. What's missing here is that it, it's a lot of solid, and we don't quite have the um, interesting breakup of the paint that we had from the example. I'm going to go back to our background layer that we created the lighting effect on, this background copy, and just go to your lasso tool, 
and we want to make a fairly small selection. I'm going to make it over in this darker area of the brick wall, and you don't want to be very uh, precise in this selection. We don't need a very big selection, but don't worry about it being very precise. Just make a small selection, kind of jagged around the edges, and uh, then we've got a selection. We want to go up and modify that selection. So you want to go under Select, Modify, and I'm going to feather that selection. And uh, because of the resolution of this image, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 10, uh, which is what I've got here. You may need to adjust this number based on the resolution of the image you're working with or the final effect that you want to achieve. Let's go ahead and pick 10 for this one. Now we're going to make a brush. So how do you make a brush? You want to go to Edit, down here to Define Brush Preset. And this is great. Our brush pops up here. We get a little preview of it. We can pick a name. I'm going to call this one Dark Knight. And you want to click the OK button. We still have our selection selected. You want to deselect that. And the fastest way to do that is your Command or Control D key will deselect the selection that you just had. Now we also need to switch to our painting layer. That's a layer with our painting on it. Go to your brush tool, and we want to select a brush. Now whenever you make a new brush, the brush that you just created will be the last one. If I hover over it, it will show the name of that brush which we just made called Dark Knight. I'm going to select that brush. Back to the loose painting. I, I just want to be very loose about this painting. I also want to change the opacity of this brush to um, about a 40%. And then I'm over here on my drawing layer and I want to create a mask for that layer. And uh, part of the reason I want to do that is just to give me a little bit of flexibility. But I, I think this effect works better if we just mask it uh, and paint in the mask versus erasing. So I'm going to click on this painting layer. I'm going to click on the mask tool, add mask layer. Now this layer has a mask. And I have that mask selected. I want to be painting in black over here as my foreground color, which was already there by default. And now I'm going to paint. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm painting around some of these spots that we created to kind of break up our paint effect. Now, this 40% opacity can be decreased or increased. Let's just for fun, let's increase it up to 70. And we'll paint a few more spots around where we painted before kind of break up our painting a little bit and uh, getting a little bit more of that brush effect that we saw in our example. Now since we're working in the the mask area we can also jump right down here and we can start painting on the the big smile that we got as well. And I'm just being very loose about this and kind of painting where I think it feels like it will work well. And again, I can go back and I can change this opacity. Uh, might just for kicks put it up to 100% a couple spots and lower it down uh, substantially and a few others down to maybe, you know, 20% and a few spots just to give it a nice, interesting look. And if you get to the the point where you think, hey, I painted a little bit too much of it away. You can go over and swap your foreground color to white. And I'm going to paint back in just a little bit. Actually, I need to increase my opacity to 100%. I'm going to paint back in just a little bit of my red over here that I, I kind of feel like I need. We've got a great looking jokery face. <laughs> You've reached the end of this camping trip. Hike over to CampPhotoshop.com, where visitors can sign up for freebies and more video tutorials by Adobe Certified Expert and Camp Counselor, Roger Redpath.